Hello everyone, my name is Jared Morlow and I'm here with the Blue and Gray Education Society. And tonight we have a real treat. We have Bert Dunkerley here with us tonight. And he's going to talk about uh, the new uh, Explorer's Guide to the American Revolution that was just put out uh, that he had a large hand in authoring. So um, I'm gonna give a slight introduction, Bert, and then I will let you take off from there. So uh, Bert is a historian, an award-winning author and a speaker who is actively involved in historic preservation and research. He holds a degree in history from St. Vincent College and a master's in historic preservation from Middle Tennessee State University. Bert has worked at several historic sites and written many books on different historic topics. His research includes archeology, span colonial life, military history, and historic commemoration. Bert is currently a park ranger at the Richmond National Battlefield Park. And Bert, we are certainly glad to ha have you with us tonight. Well, thank you. Is is there anything more you want to add to that? I mean, that was that was very uh, very brief. We could say long time blue and gray member. There, there we go, long time blue <laughs> and gray member. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's 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 always great. Um, so um, tell us a bit more about you and your background in history, and maybe more specifically as uh, to your interest in the American Revolution. Sure. Uh, I uh, was fortunate in that my parents uh, liked to travel and uh, took me to historic sites when I showed an interest as a, a young child. Uh, I remember going to Yorktown and Williamsburg and Valley Forge in Philadelphia. Uh, those really stand out to me. And I ran around and, you know, getting my, uh, my tricorn hat and my plastic sword. <laughs> but, um, I, I just love to travel and visit historic sites. And as people ask me, do you like the Civil War or the Revolution better? I like both, uh, like a lot of our, our readers probably do. Uh, but with the anniversary of the Revolution coming, I started to get really excited about that and thinking about this this idea for the travel guide. Right, yeah, the the big two fifty is coming up, and yeah, that's yep. that's gonna, that's gonna be an exciting time for our our country, the semi quincentennial. If yeah, <laughs> but it's 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 far easier far easier to say two fifty. So, uh, what inspired you to put together a a travel guide for for the two fiftieth? Sure. So, I was initially talking with a another publisher years ago about the idea and started making notes and thinking about it. That, that effort fell through. And I remember I got involved with blue and gray and I've been on the board and I've led tours for them, uh, talking to Len about the idea. And we initially had a publisher in mind, but that fell through. So the project lay dormant again for a couple of years. And seeing that the, the 250th was coming in just a few more years, I decided to try one more time and talk to Len. And we, we kicked around exciting ideas. And we were able to get a, a new publisher. <laughs> and Len, I want to give a lot of credit to, uh, assembled a great team of uh, editors and photographers and, and other writers and reviewers and fact checkers. Uh, lots of people involved to help put this together and make sure it was as accurate and attractive as it could be. Yeah, um, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but um, Lynn gave me several advanced copies of, of the chapters so I could read through them. And I was like, wow, this is this is fascinating stuff because I'm the president <laughs> Of the local SAR chapter here, uh, Sons of the American Revolution chapter here in Martinsville, where I live, and I was like, "Wow!" Because I had never seen anything like that before. Nothing that compiled everything in, into one spot. So, <clears throat> even just a few chapters into it, I knew I knew that this is going to be something special. Um, so, when, when you're creating a travel guide and um, you know trying to compile everything together, what uh, what kind of goes into it like what what events do you put in there what, what events do you 
do not. I mean, because I mean, you could publish a, you know several thousand pages about the entire history. But what what goes into the uh, the, the process of picking out certain people and sites and, and such? So I started with um, looking at other travel guides. Uh, like I said, I love to travel and I love to visit historic sites and museums. And so the, the first thing I did was to think about what would be helpful to me. As I like to travel and experience things. And I, I looked at several guides that are out there, um, not just revolutionary type guidebooks, but Civil War guidebooks and other travel guidebooks that I've got. And I wanted to take some of the best ideas from those things that I thought were helpful. Um, I then looked at, you know, the revolution. You obviously want to cover the big events, you know, the, the precursor, the lead up to the, the conflict, the conflict itself, and then the aftermath. But with this, I wanted to be very uh, tight and focused on the revolution itself. So I did not, for example, include things about the French and Indian War or other colonial right, era right. sites, you know, that that took place before the revolution. Um, I, I wanted to take it from the, the start of colonial protests and the tensions with England up through the conflict and up through, you know, the Constitutional Convention and the early, very early federal period. I don't I don't go too far into I don't go to the 1800s at all, uh, just go into the early years after the revolution when uh, the country has to consolidate and, and create this new government and get things up and running. All right, and that's that's awesome because even though things like the French and Indian War, you know, are a direct correlation, you know, you could get bogged down in going yeah. into those. And then if you wanted to do things in like, Lord Dunmore's war, you know, you could get really tied down in, in that stuff. All, all that's very important and has oh yeah direct direct correlation to it. But um, I appreciate the the conciseness of you know this is what happened between these years and um, I, I appreciate that. Uh, so what went into on a similar note uh, picking the <clears throat> the readings and the recommended uh, extra stuff for for each site. Yeah, one of the things that I really love about the guidebook is that we include recommended readings and I want to include the best latest scholarship on, on some of these topics, uh, but also classics, works that are well respected so that if you're interested in a certain person or a certain battle or, or a certain topic, uh, you, you know uh, some things to delve into. We also included websites, not just recommended books. And then, um, you know, we have sidebars throughout the book that give a little bit more information about interesting topics. Uh, sometimes it's something that's sort of mainstream, like, you know, soldier's life or soldier's equipment, but sometimes it's something a little bit uh, that I think is interesting and important, but maybe gets overlooked uh, often in, in histories. Right. And when talking about a certain, <clears throat> me, a certain topic or a certain event, how do you narrow down what exactly you want to say with this? You know, how, you know, you leave the person with five or six sentences, you know, that's going to sum up the story of this one thing that's monumental. So what what goes into that? Yeah, it's a challenge. And um you know, it is a guidebook, so we want the fo we wanted the focus to be on what can you see, what can you do, and so you have to have a little bit of balance between the history, give a little bit of information, but then you got to make sure you're including enough about what there is to see there, uh, what you can do there. So it's trying to find that that correct balance, and obviously we want it to be thorough. I think we I think we were pretty thorough. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, including battlefields, monuments, historic homes, plantations, museums, uh, graveyards, cemeteries, uh, any historic site or place where there's something to see, 
uh, that people can visit and learn about the revolution and the people and the, the time, the lifestyles of the, the 18th century. Right. And you don't want to necessarily rewrite the history of it, but I, one, one thing I found pretty cool about it was, you know, going to these places or, you know, traveling to them. <clears throat> if something sparked me, you know, I read a four or five sentence blurb and then I was like, wow, that's fascinating. I want to know more about this. And then like talk about more, there's a book suggested, there's a, <clears throat> there's a website suggested so you got all these things all in one place that if you want to know more about it, if you want to know more than just the, par you know, the paragraph or paragraph summation or, you know, if, <clears throat> if something just sparks you, like I, I get sparked all the time when I go visit places. Like I love that everything you need. Oh, if you want to know more about it, go read this book. You know, that's that to me is, is very helpful. Yeah, thanks. Um, I agree. Um. So what are some true must-see places that are in there? And maybe some that, you know, aren't the, the ones that people would name off the bat. Sure. Um, I mean, it's, it's hard. There's a lot of favorites. Uh, there's a lot of uh, sites that I think are important. But I'll, I'll say, you know, obviously Independence Hall. Uh, that, that's right. where it happened. That's such an iconic site. Uh, going there, And there's a lot, too. More than just Independence Hall, there's several historic uh, museums and, and uh, buildings within that complex in downtown Philadelphia. Right. So, so there's a lot you can experience and, and learn about there. But other sites that maybe aren't as well known or that, that I would recommend for one thing or another, uh, Cowpens, South Carolina, uh, such a, a great example of, of, of bravery and um, absolutely by, by the American troops there uh, beautiful tactics by Daniel Morgan uh, Morristown New Jersey uh, not as famous as Valley Forge but a much tougher winter and the resilience and determination of the troops who wintered there is inspiring Vincennes Indiana and a lot of People might be surprised that, you know, there's a major revolutionary war site in, in the Midwest, in Indiana. Uh, but it was a British post that the Americans captured. Uh, crossing, you know, frozen winter, uh, frozen rivers in the winter and uh, dealing with the, the difficult conditions. So those are some of the places that, that stand out to me. Um, and one of the other things I... I really like is that we focused on uh, everything that we, we try to include a lot of things that are sort of off the beaten path or off the radar. So there's, there's sites in Florida, you know, there, there's revolutionary war history in Florida. There, right. you know, there's sites in you know, Tennessee and Kentucky and uh, Ohio and a lot of places that, that people might not think about uh, no matter where you live. Generally, if you're on the <laughs> eastern half of the country, uh, there's probably some revolutionary history near you. Right. <clears throat> you know, one one thing I'll throw in there, living so close to it, and it's a true hidden gem of this area because not many people really know the history behind it, is Guilford Courthouse. You know, yeah. they've, they have done a, a great job with not only preserving it, but also making it a, a public-friendly park um, as far as with the trails and and everything you know that that's a true hidden gem and people around here just you know who've lived here their whole life don't really know the story of Guilford Courthouse and how crucial that was to setting things up for Yorktown like that was it, it's it's an amazing place it's a great story and you're right it's a beautiful park uh and it just goes to show that you, you can win the battles but you may not be winning the war mm -hmm. absolutely yeah I, um one thing that I always tell people yeah, because we, or someone from um, my chapter or myself, try to go down every year for the battle um, anniversary. And when people always ask me, like, hey, I, I saw you uh, post photos on Facebook. Well, where was that place at? I'm like, oh, it's Greensburg. It's an hour south. And they're like, well, I've never heard of this. And I was like, well, it's about Nathaniel Green, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, that's 
the that's one that I, I kind of want to throw in there. If you're ever in the, the Greensboro, North Carolina area, yeah, um, that's that's a definite must see. Uh, could you tell us more about the award that the book uh, was, sure. was given recently? So, yeah, uh, I, I was totally shocked, uh, pleasantly, pleasantly surprised. Uh, the Society of American Travel Writers is a group that promotes professional journalism, and uh, they sort of set the industry standards for travel guides and they have different categories and our revolutionary war guide won silver uh, recently for this year's uh, award ceremony and what they really want to emphasize you know they, they look at accuracy they look at what provides the best advice for people to spend their time and money and so i want to not take all the credit here like I said before, there's a, a team behind this. Uh, the other uh, contributors, the photographers, the editors, uh, people who helped assemble this and design it, uh, Len and, and a lot of people like you who helped read and, and suggest things. Uh, it's really a team effort for Blue and Gray. Yeah, and I don't, I don't take any credit for. It. I, I just was reading in a maze, but that's that's such an awesome awesome thing to to be given and um you know if a group that that's all they do is review travel guides you know thinks that you, that you got yeah. something special and one thing that you know i think is uh fair to mention is you know we're still two and a half three years out from when the main focus of the 250 is going to really heat up and this travel guide is already out there. So if you want to go visit these sites, you know, before, during, after, you know, this guide is out there. It's on Amazon. It's on Blue and Gray Education's uh, website. It, it's already out there for you. Um, it isn't it something that they got pre-order and wait, you know, closer to the time for it's, it, it's already out there. So that's, you know, that we're getting way, way ahead of the curve. And from, from what you said, it, it, it it, it, it could have been a lot earlier. People can get ready now. Yeah. Always. And, and visit all these sites before the masses do. Yeah. <laughs> so what were some, some of the, the big challenges that you and, and others had while putting this together? So in writing a travel guide uh, like this, there's a couple things that, that came up. Uh, one was, I would say, the constant need to balance uh, information, you know, the, the facts, the history with guide information, you know, that, that balance between you know, giving, giving history, but yet you got to give information about you know, what to see, the hours, where things are, you know, just having that, that good balance. So it's not too much of one or the other. Uh, one thing that was really challenging, and I like the way we solved it was there are some events like the Battle of Brandywine in Pennsylvania, uh, which was a huge battle. And today there are several historic sites that relate to that. So there's a, a state historic, there's a couple uh, smaller parks that preserve part of the, the battlefield elsewhere. Uh, there's a museum. And so if we were creating uh, an entry for Brandywine, uh, it didn't seem to make sense to list the Brandywine Battlefield Park and then these other sites separately uh, because they'd be scattered through the Pennsylvania chapter. So we came up with the solution of having a Brandywine category and everything related to Brandywine falls under mm -hmm. that. So that if you're going to Brandywine, you can read about all those sites in one place. And right. I think that was a great solution. We applied that to a couple other places too. Right. Yeah, that's that's definitely helpful because you, you want to see and do all you can while you're there and not, and not have to, to to skip around for sure. Yeah. So what's what thing are you most proud of with this guide? I like 
that's hard to say one thing. <laughs> so I'll say a couple. Okay. Um, I I like that we, I think, challenge assumptions. There's a couple, for example, there's a couple sidebars that challenge this. Uh, you know, we talk about the Hessians, the German troops, and some misconceptions about them. We talk about camp followers, the women who are with the army. Uh, we do little things that I think challenge people's assumptions and understandings. Uh, another example is that you know, we lay out the book in sections of the country, geographic sections. And I really wanted to put Virginia in the mid-Atlantic rather than in the southern section. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the time today, we think through the lens of the Civil War, well, Virginia is a southern state. Right. But Virginia is, is a mid-Atlantic state as well and has or had economic uh, and cultural ties to you know, Maryland and Delaware and the Chesapeake area. So little things like that that, that maybe help people see things in a different way. Um, we have historic sites that talk about light colonial life like the the Pennsylvania plantation. Uh, Colonial Williamsburg is obvious, but there's other sites that give you a feel for daily life and the different ethnic groups, you know, Scotch Irish, German, French Huguenot, uh, the, the religious groups, Quakers and Moravians in, in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, they all played a role. They're, they're somewhat overlooked in the general understanding of American history. So having those in there, I think, really helps people understand the complexity. And, and that's what good history should do, is, is, is challenge people to see things in new ways. Right. And that's kind of uh, something that we talked about before. You Or when the common person thinks about a war, they think about battles, people, <clears throat> you know, events, what happened when, and then what happened next, and then what happened next. But they don't think about... You know, they're they're marching through people's farms. They're taking their supplies that they had stored for the winter. Um, they're dealing with the fact that not everybody around them has the same beliefs as them. Um, yeah. Um, you know, with with being loyal or not and and some being just completely ap ap apathetic towards it all. Uh, so it, it's good that you're you're focusing on every single aspect of the revolution, not just oh, at this place, this person did this and there's the battle lines over there, but also focusing on this was something that impacted the, the lives of every single person who lived in the colonies and in the states at, at that time. Whether you were, you had sent a, a husband or a son off the battle or not, it still impacted every aspect of, of your life. Yeah. And, you know, talking about uh, things beyond the battles, we include things like industrial sites, mills, furnaces, mines, mm -hmm. uh, naval sites, because, you know, you have to support the war effort. You, you know, right. The economic things play into this, too. And those those are fascinating. So we wanted to include those kind of historic sites, too, the, a, a bigger picture of the, the war effort. Right. Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. So <clears throat> what makes this guide special to the 250th? A couple things, I, I think. Uh, one is that we have a lot of information about the 250th. So we have uh, information about websites. Most of the original 13 states have commissions with websites. Those websites have information about special events, uh, goals and themes that they're trying to achieve. They have educational information. So we wanted to include that. Uh, we, we have information about the, the National Commission uh, for, the, for the 250th anniversary, the Federal Commission. And it has goals and themes and ideas that, uh, that it wants to, to convey. We include information from historic organizations about the 250th. Uh, the, the importance of civics is one example. Uh, 
a lot of groups are promoting that. Uh, the importance of education, the importance of understanding the process of history, how history is researched and debated and written. Um, so those are important themes that we, we also brought in. So you have the guidebook, the historic sites, the places to go. But I think a lot of up-to-date information about historical ideas and scholarship and what different states and different organizations are doing. Yeah, and like well, like Bart said, uh, if you just go and or go to Google and type in um, like Virginia 250, um, you know, that you can see what each locality is doing and what, what the state has planned. And it's like that for, for most of every state. I think every state has 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 a commission now. I can only speak for Virginia, but even within Virginia, um, each different county, each different city has its own committee, and they're dedicated to promoting things that are not only just local, but just awareness of the the 250. So, you know, no matter where you are up and down the East Coast, uh, you're liable to run into a, a 250 of uh, event here in the next few years um and then yep, you'll have yep. your and then then you, you'll you'll have your guidebook handy to go visit some some other places while you're traveling um well Bert, is there anything uh else that you want to say about the book uh, i mean i can i can vouch that it's a great i actually gave my, my copy to uh, cheryl wilson from uh the oh. virginia virginia 250 she was she was dying to read it yeah. and um, I, I, I sent her mine, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to go buy, buy yeah, now another one. <laughs> I, I know now, now I have to go buy another one. Um, but I will, I will gladly do it. But is there anything else that we, we didn't talk about that you wanted to highlight or anything in, or anything, anything special? Uh, just want to say from a personal standpoint, I've been studying the revolution for a long time and, and I've worked at several historic sites. And I really tried to put the best of what I have into the book uh, in terms of knowledge and facts, uh, in terms of what I know about historic sites and, and traveling and the way I like to travel and enjoy things. Uh, tried to make it interesting with the sidebars, the websites, the recommended readings. And um, everybody likes to do things differently. There's driving tours, there's walking tours, there's canoeing options there's uh you could just sit on your couch <laughs> uh and, and and hopefully enjoy the book so uh really excited about all those things and uh looking forward to the 250th kicking off yeah ab absolutely um and one thing too that i know that some states are doing is and i'm glad they aren't stopping at uh 2026 they're going all the way through 2031, which I, I think is is crucial. Um, you know, while the 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 signing of it's important, you know, that's what created our country. Um, not covering all the way through Yorktown would be a travesty. So I'm I'm glad that oh, yeah. um, both this book and you know all these commissions are are getting on board for covering the entire duration of the war. Well, we're going to have the links to buy the book both here in the video and in the, the description of it. So make sure you get you a copy, get one for yourself, get one for a loved one. Uh, the holidays are coming up here. It's November 6th as we record this. So it's still time to get it, uh, get it in time for Christmas and give it to your loved ones. And uh, like I said, make sure you visit all these places before the masses start coming here in a, a few years. So Bert, we greatly Appreciate you spending some time with us tonight and everybody who's watching this go out and buy the book. Uh, trust me, you'll not regret it. It's, um, you know, it's a favorite of mine. It was my, I had mine all marked up. So I hope, hope Cheryl enjoys my, my notes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jared.